possible for me to learn to play guitar with my left hand? Let's find out. was but I didn't care, so I just went ahead and prepared myself. Then I looked at the mirror, my eye was good, so I said to myself, Yes, of course it's possible. The brain is uh, an amazing organ. I mean, everything in the in the brain, your motor learning, uh, everything is based on on the brain. Yeah, I mean, the brain is a a beautiful machine which is basically capable of adapt to any task you propose to it. So to play guitar with your left hand, it's a, it's simply a process of plasticity or brain plasticity uh, to learn something new, some new motor movement, and of course you can do it. It's the same like, or you can start by doing so, uh, brushing your teeth with your left hand. That's no, yeah. I mean uh, most of the people do it with the right hand, but I always recommend that for your health for mm. brain health you can start do it with your left hand and you will see that after some weeks you can you will be surprised how you, your left hand will learn to do that at the beginning of course it will be very very difficult you probably can hurt yourself or even your eyes doing the mm. movement but but then after a few weeks you will see how how impressive uh, the brain can learn new motor movements yeah so what is neuroplasticity i can define neuroplasticity as a, a, any change in the brain which is related to learning or which is related to recovery so mm -hmm. in general that's that's what we call plasticity so it involves molecular cellular changes which are related to uh, learning or which are related to brain recovery after some kind of injury. Is it possible to change my bad habit? Yes, for sure. Everything in the brain is uh, changeable. Bad habits are really particular because they are very strong arranged in the brain and they hardly depend on uh, several neurotransmitters and cognitive system, cognitive circuits, which are basically domain by dopamine, for example, or serotonin, for example. There's nothing in the brain which remains unchanged. Uh, the brain can learn new co cognitive behavior, which in this case will be to, to avoid bad habits, as well as it can learn uh, motor behavior. So if you are a person which has bad habits and want to change them, it's a matter of Cognitive first exercise, perhaps some professional help, uh, but definitely there's nothing a range in the brain can that cannot be changed. That we can stimulate our noradrenaline and serotonin. Mm -hmm. is. <laughs> I mean, I, I guess that's a very very complex and yeah. question, but thinking in this moment, I can tell you. For example, exercise. People doesn't realize how amazing, for example, is exercise for the brain. Because exercise regulates not only your physical processes like heart rate uh, and so on, but also regulates in a very broad aspect all the the brain process and all the all the neurotransmitter and the cognitive uh, circuits that are playing around in the brain. Exercise is a well-known activity, for example, to stimulate serotonin and dopamine um, release by the neurons in the brain, but it's also a, a way to, to change or to regulate a whole neuronal system, which does not include solely the neurons, but the brain is also composed by thousands of different cells which are uh, definitely uh, helped by, by the exercise in many ways. How does a neuroplasticity relate to growth mindset? I think that in, in the field of neuroscience, you can have um, different perspectives on the topic now. Uh, yeah. On the one hand, perhaps uh, some can say that it doesn't relate at all or relate uh, very few. 
because mm-hmm. the the mindset is just a a product of the brain itself no i mean the it, it's a functional state of the brain is the brain itself doing his work on the other hand some can say that definitely not only the mind it's a product of your brain activities but also it, It's a way to modify your own brain or your own body. So I think this is related in the moment with the unsolved problem or the dualism problem, brain and mind. Yeah, How powerful are your thoughts to regulate your brain activity instead mm-hmm. of your brain activity regulating your thoughts? For example, we can think about, okay, um, if I want to be happy, I will try to be happy i will set myself to be happy or if i want to achieve some goals i will i will to set myself uh, in the perspective of achieving that goals yeah but i think that's a question neuroscience at the moment can hardly answer because we exactly don't know how the brain is taking decisions we exactly don't know how the brain uses emotion and thinking to regulate itself so i guess both perspectives can be on the table at the moment some perspectives can say yes definitely it's a a functional state of the brain you cannot do anything with it but on the other hand perhaps uh, your thinking and your feeling it's completely regulating your brain activities so it's a very hard question and i think that for in the field of plasticity it's really difficult to to answer very clearly yeah what is your speciality as a neuroscientist as a neuroscientist study um, in a stroke models so i study the glia response and the extracellular matrix response after ischemic brain injuries so basically i study everything which uh, which is not neurons in the brain after a brain Relation. Do you believe that the uh, consciousness is a part of our soul, or what is your belief when it comes to consciousness? A very deep and interesting question, yeah. uh, and especially it's a, a very interesting for me because my bachelor degree was precisely focused on on consciousness. consciousness. Um, So I did my thesis uh, based on the topic of consciousness. Uh, in this moment, I simply think consciousness or the mind itself, it's a functional state of the brain. Mm-hmm. No, nothing else, nothing more. So consciousness or the mind emerge from biological, from certain brain activity and that's it the hard question is to answer which degree of consciousness can emerge from simple systems to complex systems as humans of course we are aware of of our own consciousness no we are aware that we can interpret see the world think about the world but we do not know if dogs can do the same if cats can do the same if mice can do the same if we go Uh, back on the evolution line, it's even difficult to describe if mouse can feel the same, if bees can feel the same, if snakes can feel the same. So I think that define the consciousness as a functional state of the brain, it's more or less easy, and we have evidence of that. The hard question is when or which functional state provokes the merging of the consciousness and in which animal scale we can talk about consciousness. So where's the the divisory line, you know? So these animals Mm -hmm. uh, doesn't have self-awareness, but these animals do. So it's a very, very difficult question. And I think uh, neuroscience, although it's a topic studied in the field, I think we definitely need to put more effort on try to realize how consciousness is regulated by brain circuitry. What I can say for sure, or my, or my my thinking in 
this moment that consciousness is always related with neuronal activity no but as i said earlier the brain is not just made by neurons but it's made by a bunch of other cells and a bunch of other matrix molecules which definitely plays a role in there so i guess that consciousness is completely the interface between neurons functioning with with their synapses and glia functioning with the regulation of brain of meiostasis, for example. But don't you think that the consciousness has a big part when it comes to neuroplasticity? Is I there, don't think so. Bigger, mm, you know, and that, that's a, a very interesting question, especially for us humans, but actually any animal. So, so that's the problem. Again, we don't know how conscious it's a rat. We don't know how conscious is a mice, no? Uh, Or, or even smaller animals, simpler animals. But I think that brain plasticity doesn't require consciousness. Oh, We are okay. talking about, for example, brain plasticity after injury. It doesn't require consciousness. You can model brain plasticity in culture cells, for example. You can simply make a lesion in, in a dish, in a Petri dish with culture cells, which, of course, or at least uh, we think they are not conscious, no, We assume that the culture cells in a petri dish are not conscious. You can simply make an injury there and the, the cells will reorganize themselves. So for sure, uh, when we are talking about plasticity after injury, it doesn't need um, consciousness. Now, mm. now, when we're talking about the learning, for example, or, or learning of motor behaviors, I guess consciousness is helpful in the case mm -hmm. of mammals or higher or animals with higher cognitive capabilities. But we can see that simple animals, uh, for example, bees can learn or, or fruit flies, for example, For example, they can learn about the environment, they can learn about how to respond to certain stimuli. So basically, uh, many simple animals can be conditioned to learn patterns in the environment and to respond to them. Mm -hmm. And perhaps we can say that a fruit fly, we can say that a bee perhaps doesn't have self-awareness or perhaps doesn't have what we call consciousness. But nevertheless, they can learn and they, and they can modify their behaviors according to the environment. So consciousness is useful when we are animals with high capabilities, but is not required specifically to learn something new, to repair the brain or to plasticity in general. The brain is the most important organ in your body, you no? Know, because the brain is the one which is saying this, no? Yeah. <laughs> And, uh, <laughs> So you really need to take care of your brain and take care of your brain is having an active cognitive life throughout your whole life. And cognitive means not only reading, but also a physical exercise. Because you can be very, very amazed to understand how tight are these two functions, motor behavior and thinking. So. For the brain, is not just useful to maintain a cognitive, active life throughout reading or other cognitive activities, playing chess, for example, but also throughout physical exercise, going to gym, going for walking, going for jogging. This really, really uh, helps to keep brain balance and brain health. Yeah, thank you very much. That's It's glad to hear that. So probably I'm gonna, yeah, it's going to take a, yeah. Really? Oh, okay. Here it's real. Oh, really? Where is it? Ah, nice to see you. Wow, congratulations. Yeah, thanks. Oh.